And hello, my name is David Summerfleck. I am your host. I'm a digital marketing specialist with about 20 years experience working for different agencies and the proud author of The Road to Digital Marketing Profits. Get your copy today on Amazon. Um, this is another episode of Rebooting Business. And my very kind guest today is Mr. Godwin Chan over on the other side of the screen. How are you today, Godwin? I hope you're doing well. I am doing well. Uh, how about yourself? I'm very well, thank you. Let's talk about your podcast and your background and interests and your area of expertise um, or, or interest, whatever term you think is more accurate. Sure, sure. That, that's, that's, um, that sounds good. Um, in terms of the podcast, it's, uh, it's called Digital Introverts. And on the show, we... Um, so it's an interview based podcast. So it'll just like this one, right? So my guests and I, um, uh, go through the gamut of what it means to be an introvert, especially in the digital age. Um, uh, what does that mean to them? What does that look like in terms of, you know, the, in the context of, of career, of their career, um, progression, uh, things like that. And I think, you know, more, more generally speaking, more broadly speaking, I guess, you know, my, my interest or my expertise, if you will, has really been in kind of the areas of personal branding, digital marketing, uh, event planning, uh, networking, things like that. And I've been doing these things for the past few years now. Just, you know, I started uh, when I was still in school, you know, doing or starting to host uh, different networking, networking events and academic conferences um, to, to now doing a lot of business networking event, well, events. Well, now it, it, it's all virtual, but, right. you know, it used, it used to be in person. Um, and, and really crafting an identity or, or a personal brand for myself, uh, both off online and offline, you know, and online being, um, social media, uh, especially LinkedIn and yeah, and offline. And so I'll, I'll tell you an interesting story, you know, uh, the, the profile photo that I have on most, um, uh, most things that I, that I do online. So my online avatar, right. If you will is me in a very you know, professional getup um, with a bow tie. Yes. And so what, what, what happened, <laughs> what has happened is that when people see me at networking events, people will refer to me as the bow tie guy. Yeah. And, and that to me is really interesting because that in itself is a, a, is a particular part of my personal brand now. Now, yes. uh, you know, I, I'm almost obligated to wear, <laughs> to wear a bow tie. Now I don't have, I'm not in uh, professional, you know, clothes today, but, uh, that's, that's almost part of my brand now because of that, you know, photo that, uh, my, my photographer friend helped me take. So that it's really interesting. Yeah. It gives people a visual, um, point of reference almost, you know, people ask me because I, I've always been a lousy dresser. And, uh, one day my wife just said, well, what's your favorite color? We know your favorite color is blue. Why don't you just wear blue all the time? And I thought you're a genius. It makes it simple, easy. I know what to wear when I would go to networking events or, or teach boot camps, right? And um, so I just well, and, and then what do you, what is it that you do? Um, so, you know, and, and so you find a way to combine those two. Let's hit right, exactly. Well, so let, let's talk about what is a digital introvert and have they increased with the rise of COVID-19 and more people working remotely? Right. I think what has, so first of all, I'll define the term, you know, digital introverts. And it's a term that, you know, I, um, I essentially came up with, well, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I did a Google search and, uh, the term does exist like on, and maybe a couple other blog posts, but you know, I'm really kind of the first one, if you will, to really take the the concept for, out for a spin, if you will. Um, it's essentially, you know, uh, someone who self-identifies as being more introverted, really leveraging the digital technologies that are available right out there uh, right. now, in the past, in the future, for you know their their benefit while still staying true them to themselves as kind of, you know, more, more quiet, you know, being a person on more on the quieter side. And, 
you know, in terms of right now with the current situation that we're in, right? Um, what's really interesting is that I've had a few comments from a few different individuals who thought that they were that they were always extroverted, that they were always people, you know, uh, people, per, people, uh, person, pe people, person. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> that they were always, um, you know, that they like to have people around all the time. Right. With them. And what they've noticed is that from by working from home, that they've realized that this type of environment is actually more suited for for them, in a way. Yeah. And so what they've discovered is that you know, oh, you know, maybe I am more introverted than I thought, or you know, I'm more of a of a of equal balance between introversion and extroversion. You know, right down right down the middle. Um, I found that super fascinating that the, you know that it took. I guess <laughs> a, a a a global kind of situation to for them to realize that. I think it definitely helps people who may be introverted, whether extremely or moderately. I think digital marketing or digital technology can really help you be more efficient but also more targeted. I mean, I know from my own uh, experiences, I've taught many, many boot camps and workshops, but aside from having that structure or, or edifice around me, always feeling uh, very much, what do I say? How do I talk to you in such a way that you will listen or that you seem to, to listen? I mean, we've all been to networking groups, I'm sure you have, where they say, well, what do you do? And you say what you do, and they say, well, I don't need that. And then they turn around and leave. And I've had that happen many times. And I had this happen at an event uh, right before COVID-19 came, where I went to a business networking event. And I think the gentleman was a church pastor. Okay. And I said, well, what, what, so we're talking and he said, well, I'm a church pastor. I said, well, that's great. What's the church? I'll look it up. So I take out my phone. I look it up and I said, well, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm a digital marketing consultant with about 20 years experience working for different businesses. I'm sure I could help you. Oh, well, I have a website from Wix. I don't need any help. And of course I look at the website. It doesn't work on the modern phone. There's no way for him to accept donations. It doesn't have a padlock, so it doesn't look secure. There's no way to listen to sermons or purchase anything from the church. So he's leaving all this money on the table, completely disinterested. So I think digital technology helps you to be more surgical because now I don't, I'm not meeting you face to face. I can do more. It almost like it's forcing you to be more surgical and more precise in how you work. Do you think that's a big part of what could be the digital introversion aspect that it just lets you work more efficiently? I believe so. Um, in just in terms of, because now we don't necessarily have quote unquote distractions of commuting to work or forced, so, forced social um gatherings or, or th things like that right where it's like you know you know you're you're, you're not you're, you know you're not you know it's not mandatory to go hang out with your work buddies over at the bar but you almost feel compelled to because you want to increase social contagion whatever the case may be but now because with the work from home situation for a lot of folks it almost has forced people to reevaluate how they're spending their time and whether or not for example if they're if people will ever return to the office when all of this is said and done and whether or not you know they can or they want more flexibility in their day-to-day -day schedule to be able to um, you know have some set time for work obviously but also at the same time be able to pick up their kids from school or uh, you, you know or uh, do some chores, you know, during the day, uh, things like run some errands, um, things like that. So I, I think there will be more, more people who will, you know, especially introverts who really want to, of course, take control, uh, 
a bit more of their of their own schedule uh to be able to yeah to schedule the days the way so that it for them it, it's more comfortable you know instead of i guess be you know having the schedule control them in a way do you think people who are digital introverts are more efficient in terms of providing you know high quality work for business owners and their clients as opposed to people who use digital tools let's say but are more extroverted hmm. that's a really interesting question obviously right now it's it, it i don't have have any hard data that is a very interesting research question right whether or not there is an increase in efficiency perhaps but i what i can say anecdotally is that a few a few individuals have said to me that you know whether or not they're working with um with introverts on on team projects or um or things like that is that the quality of work that they provide is usually very very top notch um and it is a very you know high high quality just because you know, obviously they spend a lot of time uh on it not only time commitment but also just you know dedicating that time alone to to actually completing those different types of tasks as well and so there is that aspect at least at least you know on on a superficial like feeling or or anecdotal level yeah, on a superficial level, it would seem that someone who would pay more attention to specific uses would 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 deliver a higher quality outcome than someone who may know how to use a digital tool, but perhaps would be more um, in tune with social cues. But it's like you said that that would be a very interesting subject to see more research on so i guess where do you see digital introversion in culture internationally and globally do you see that as more focused in some cultures or in some countries or in some groups or types of people such right. as you know graphic designers versus copywriters Right. I think, yeah, you can, you can really segment, uh, this question in different ways. Obviously, you know, culture can refer to, uh, you know, uh, national cultures, ethnic cultures, um, even, you know, by industry as well, like you mentioned, right. Or the, the, the types of occupations that people, um, you know, uh, that, that people have. And so I, I will address kind of more, I guess, national, you know, slash, uh, ethnicity based, uh, culture and, and uh, you know, on a, on a very surface level, the North American culture is very, can be very considered very extroverted in, in a way. Right? That, I, that, I agree. I agree. That, yeah. And, and to an extension, like Western Europe as well, just to an extent, a certain extent, um, whereas for example, um, other you know, people from, from Asia, for example, are, are seen more generally to be more introverted. Like the, like the, the qualities of introversion are more heralded and more celebrated in a way, right. That, you know, and, and this, this really comes down to just the differences in cultural values and, and upbringings, um, and how individuals are just conditioned or, or, or taught, right, you know, um, not explicitly, but rather just through social interaction in schools, uh, in the workplace, um, things like that, where, you know, here, it's, it's encouraged to, uh, you know, stand up and, and speak for oneself to, uh, you know, to, to really project your voice to, mm. to be forceful in that way. Um, whereas, you know, in some, some Asian cultures, it's, it's frowned upon to do that. Right. It's to, you know, it's all about the collective uh, mindset or the, 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 you know, co um, collective nature of groups. Right. And if, if someone embraces individuality that way, in that manner, it's usually seen to be disharmonious or unharmonious. It looks, you know, unharmonious to, to the entire group. So it's discouraged that way. I think. The, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
I, I no, 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 I was just going to say, but but having said that, there, you know, in terms of you know different industries or things like that, I think in in business in general, um, whether Western, Eastern, whatever, in the business culture or the business mindset, it's all just extroverts. <laughs> like going to going to any any MBA program or any C suite level, like they're uh, you know people want to see very bold CEOs or just leaders in general, like they're, they're fearless, they're speak their mind, um, things like that. So it, 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 that's transcends cultures. Yeah. Yeah. And when I think of extroverted CEOs, I think of smoke and mirrors in a lot of cases, such as, you know, Elon Musk with his recent bizarre behavior, losing him. I'm not, I, I, I still don't understand you know. what goes through his mind. <laughs> I, I think, I think he's just so isolated from the way that, uh, you know, people who are not sheltered think that it doesn't occur to him to that it's it would be unusual to name your son after a mathematical equation or to say something like, I think my company is overvalued. Oh, well, that's that's smart. I'm making too much money. Here, take some of it. Um, it. It cost him several billion dollars, but it does seem I think the operative word that you used is the collective. You know, in many other countries, they see themselves as a collective part of a larger whole in which it's important to look for the welfare of others. The interests of others do matter, whereas in so much of Western culture, the welfare of others is irrelevant. It does seem that way. And I, I don't know if you would agree or disagree, but it does seem that way, especially with the COVID-19, where you see people protesting in the U.S., uh, an unwillingness to you to wear basic facial masks, whereas in most Asian cultures, you see that it's quite common. Why would you not wear it? What is the big deal? And you would think, well, wait a minute, if you care about your family members or the elderly or the very young who are now getting uh, in, internal inflammation issues, why would you not wear a mask? How hard is it to do that? It seems more self-centered, doesn't it? In in a way, it is. In a way, it's also in you know, I guess in their justification, I believe it mainly you know because you know the government has told their their citizens to to adopt certain practices, obviously for mixed messages, you know, drastic, drastic, drastic times call for drastic measures. At the, and here the tension is. You know, between kind of what is what you know what is encouraged, you know, for for public health reasons, versus civil liberty, civil liberties, and so you can see that there's this real big tension between these two kind of extremes, uh, where that's why you have individuals, you know, uh, going out and, and and protesting because it, you know, I I have, I want to have the choice to you know, not socially distance, or I want to have the choice to go back to work. However, that, you know, that looks like, right? Uh, which, in a way, I do understand, but at the same time, I don't understand. Um, just because you, again, humans are not isolated units. That's the, that's the other thing, right? Your actions will always have consequences for everyone around you. And, right. and, and if you inadvertently, you know, uh, spread around, you know, keep spreading around COVID-19, the longer the lockdown is going to happen, <laughs> you know, you yeah. know, you're just prolonging it. Yeah. And ultimately on a higher level, the more people will suffer um, across the board, more people will pass away. So I think, it, I, and I don't mean to uh, uh, pay, put you in a corner with that type of question. Let's get back to digital introversion. How can people who are digital introverts work more efficiently with business owners? And then uh, if I can make it a two part question, how can business owners work with people who are digital introverts in an efficient way? Right, so it's the it, it's a back and forth kind of thing, right? So, um, you know, how, how, how basically how digital introverts can work with business owners and vice versa during this time. Yes. Uh, essentially, it, it, the one crucial thing it, it just boils down to really solid communication uh between the two parties right understand how or what 
you know, manner, uh, digital introverts, introverts really want to, or are very eager to, to communicate in. Like, for example, I've had a few friends who uh, are very hesitant on showing up on, on video conferencing calls, right? They just prefer, just prefer texting or they just prefer a phone call, um, things like that. You know, some people are just not comfortable with showing their face on camera. Um, and, and, you know, that is totally fine that I used to be the same way. Right. Um, uh, and it's just, you, you know, there are, uh, you know, certain things, um, you know, preventing them from, from doing so maybe they're not comfortable. Maybe, um, they were, they're worried about, about security, things like that. And so really establishing really good two-way communication, however that looks like, you know, whether that's email, whether that's through, um, you know, just private messages, um, phone calls, whatever, right. Being able to, to reach people, uh, is, is very, is very key. Right. And, and also in a timely manner as well, right. Makes, you know, because something, if you're working on a project and you have, you know, at least, you know, over, over 24 hours latency in, in between messages, I think that it's not, it's very much not efficient, right. You know, that way, um, I think. Secondly, is to really recognize the, the needs that, you know, both business owners and, and digital introverts have during this time as well. Everyone is experiencing a different form of stress, right? Whether that's, um, you know, the, the, you know, immediate, uh, stress, uh, you know, on, on protecting their health, right. When it comes to, uh, you know, if they know someone who has COVID-19 or they themselves have COVID-19 to the, the economic stressors of, oh, you know, I've had a reduction in, in, in my workforce or I have, to, I have, I've had to, uh, furlough a lot of my employees, right. Um, to, to save the business, or I have had my work hours cut or just completely, I lost my job, right. Things like that. So really being empathetic with one another, um, you know, during this time and to provide support, you know, as, as, as human beings, right. In general, uh, goes a long way. Just checking up on, uh, on people once in a while, just to even, you know, to discuss non-work matters as well. Just say, Hey, how is your family? How, how is, um, you know, how is your mental state? How, how can I help you and support you, um, during this time? Did you, did you just want to have a conversation to blow some steam? Did you, um, you know, you know, you just need someone, uh, a, a, a listening ear, you know, um, being that kind of just offering that, that support, um, I think is really, is really helpful as well. Like I, for myself personally, I've had plenty of, of, uh, video conferencing over, over the past few weeks now that, you know, there was no specific agenda. It was just people gathering to just, you know, chat as friends. Right. And it's not, you know, for, for any business purpose. Yeah. Um, I think that, that, that not only, uh, replaces what we've already usually done, you know, uh, outside when we could go outside and, and do that, uh, wherever, um, but it's just good, good for the soul. Yeah, absolutely. Communication, um, is obviously, you know, extremely important. And I think the need for communication, clear communication, and some type of connection hasn't gone away. And I think some people would even argue that that need has increased because of the chaos of what we see going on in the world. Um, I'll tell you a, a story, a, a very brief one that you might think is, is humorous. Um, there was a, um, a group on Meetup for uh, web developers. And I thought, well, it would be fun to go and just talk to other people in the web de development area. It'd be really great to be able to just talk shop with people and enjoy lunch. And of course, with the commute, it took about an hour to get there. Once I got there, it still took like another 15 minutes to find the restaurant, go into the restaurant. You have to place an order that's expected of you. And it's a greasy spoon type of pub. And uh, so anyway, I go there and we're talking and I'm enjoying the conversation. And I ended up knocking over this guy's drink, got all over him. 
Now, luckily, luckily for me, he was smaller than me. Um, but of course, I felt terrible. I was very embarrassed. I said, I'm so sorry. You know, please, please pardon me. I'll be happy to buy you another one. I'm really sorry. And I felt terrible. I didn't want to go back because I felt so embarrassed when it was over. Uh, but now, if we could have that type of meetup, for other web developers, for other digital marketers, and do it online. I don't have to worry about knocking a drink over. I don't have to worry about the hour long commute. And again, if you're someone who is self conscious, or you don't feel comfortable being visible, you could always put on a guy Fox mask like the anonymous guys do, right? <laughs> yes. Or just some big gla dark glasses, you know, um, you put something on like like these maybe, you know, but uh, you could do something like that. Just say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a very shy, introverted person or whatever. And I think most people would be understanding of that. So it, right. it almost like it, it makes it easier. And I wish we could encourage the increased adoption of that. I would love to see more video conferencing groups for web developers and digital marketers. And I just don't see that many, uh, which is surprising. You would think that these individuals would be more interested, but I just don't see that many. Hopefully it'll catch on more. Um, right. I think, I think you have a point though, um, in, in, because you mentioned a really, really interesting point about, about um, networking virtually. And I think that now with the, with now because of our current situation, a lot more people are, have become a lot more available to, uh, to, to connect online. And you think that, you know, all those, uh, you know, business leaders who would have, you know, uh, day long or, or, you know, meet, uh, meeting in-person meetings all day long and, and be too busy for Horrible. you to, to talk about or to, to chat now suddenly have time on their calendar to be able to schedule, um, just virtual calls for, with people who would be interested in, uh, just having, just having a good old conversation as human beings. And I just came from just a couple, um, you know, a couple hours ago right now, like, uh, and those have been very invaluable, you know, otherwise, like I would not have been able to, uh, see these in individuals in person because they live in a completely different city right. and plus they, they, they have their own completely bu uh, very busy lives as well. So, yeah, absolutely. I could never meet you in person, uh, because the, it would be, it would take hours, if not weeks to reach you, uh, physically. So I, I think that there are definite benefits to this. Where do you see the future of work headed as regards uh, digital professionals, digital introverts, and what could be done to help companies accept remote workers more? Because right. even, even though what's going on today, there are still companies that just will not consider it. You know, uh, I'm, I, I, I don't know about your own experience. I mean, I've had many marketing jobs at different agencies where I could have done the work remotely and been much more efficient and gotten much more done more quickly working from home. At least 10 years ago, I could have done it, but they would not let you do it because they wanted to see you physically there. You're not working unless I can physically see you there and right. snap, snap my fingers and then have you come into my office so I can yell at you about right, something. The work on time, right, yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, I think fundamentally what has to happen between, you know, business owners and, and leadership team versus, you know, employees in this new, uh, you know, kind of normal, if you will, is that there is, is the question of trust, right? Do you trust your workforce to be as efficient, if not more, uh, efficient to, to work from home? Right, rather than than uh, in the office or or in, at a physical location, and of course, uh, some co some companies have leadership that are very very old school. They're very traditional. They have to see you physically at the office, um, do doing things or pretending to do to be doing things, right? Uh, to to say that oh, you know, uh, they're they're actually contributing to the uh, to to the business, right? In that way. Yeah. Whereas there are other companies who have been founded actually uh, by being completely remote, right? And so they would have different employees from from all over the world, 
uh, you know, come and 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 contribute to, to to you know to building a company that's com- that completely lives in the cloud, for example, right? And they don't have a physical office, and so they don't have to, you know have to spare that expense, you know, things like that. And and still, and now the vast majority, or I shouldn't say the vast majority, but a lot of companies have adopted a hybrid model of that, where you would have X number of days of the week where you can you're free to work from home. And then you have you know y number of days uh where where you know your 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 presence at the office is needed right to attend meetings or to you know regroup with with people in person right and so what I would say is that coming out of COVID, the covid nineteen pandemic you will see in general you know I project that there will be obviously remote work work or work from home has always been um on the slow and steady increase in recent years. I think with this um, kind of, um, you know, cataclysmic event, there, the, the, the pace of uh, working from home will, will, will skyrocket or will accelerate when people realize that, oh, you know, now I can control my schedule better. I can uh, be more flexible with my time uh, and, and, and things like that. Now, obviously, the, the one major downside of of working from home is is the social isolation, right? That is reality we all face right now, um, and some people just don't like that. Some people would really prefer um, just leaving wor- work at the office so they can go home with the with nothing to do, right? With work, right? They they want to have a clear demarcation between their work and their per- personal life, which is fair. That that's fine. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, and for a lot of other uh, people are, are concerned, you know, um, I, I, you know, I, I do work all the time, <laughs> not, not to mean like literally like all the time, like 24 hours of the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, just that I, I can, I, or I choose to do work whenever I can find time in my schedule. You know, it doesn't have to be restricted to just 9am to 5pm, wherever your, your, your time zone is, you know, I can, you know, for, for example, I had, uh, you know, a meeting for um, talking to a prospective podcast uh, for podcast guests uh, over in South Korea this morning at five in the morning, right? And so, you know, obviously that, that that's too, that's that's too early. But for me, like I wake up at that time anyway, so it it, it didn't matter for me. And it was, you know, to and and, and accommodating time zones in Asia Pacific, it, it's it's a nightmare. But in any case, just just to illustrate the point that you know. People can, you know, or you know, can choose to when they work, um, the manner in which they work, and and how often they engage in work. You know, some people like to work more, some people like to work less. You know, they don't have to be kind of forced into into spending more time time in the office than they need, or less time or less efficient time. Like for example, I've had several friends uh, tell me that you know sometimes they do nothing at the office. <laughs> For some oh, uh, yeah, I'm one of them. I they used to do that all the time. Work. They've literally just finished their work and they have nothing else to do. They just waste time at the office, right? So. Yeah, I used to be one of them. I remember when I was a copywriter for different marketing agencies, they wanted a book uh, written by a specific date. So I would literally take three hour lunch breaks and l- just look online at what have you. I'd get up and go walk around the building a couple of times because I just didn't feel... Um, any uh, motivation to write the book. I didn't feel any inspiration. And then I would just say 24 to 48 hours before the deadline, I just sit down and grind it out. I could have I could have worked so much more efficiently on multiple projects had I been permitted to work from home. But if they just want to see you there, okay, fine. I'll just go there and just fiddle faddle around to amuse them but i absolutely let me ask you one more final question and then whatever uh you may want to interject how can people who are digital introverts and business owners better work in unison to achieve the same type of goal in a post covid 19 world is that a fair question or is it is that too much yeah. No, it's a it's it's a really interesting question. It's also a very existential question too, in my opinion, because it it concerns um it concerns people's goals, hopes, dreams, desires, and it's it's very future looking. It's very forward looking as well. And obviously, there's 
with anything about the future, the future is very much uncertain. Like this pandemic can get much worse now. There can be several um, mut mutant strains of COVID-19 running amok, right, among us. Or, you know, this uh, pandemic can be solved by tomorrow, right? We find, we, we, we expedite the, 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 you know, vaccine uh, development procedure or, you know, uh, procedure, and then we can get it out in, in patients, uh, you know, very quickly. Although I, I doubt that would happen, you know, just to illustrate the example right. of what could happen. So, you know, obviously to, to navigate a post COVID-19 world, um, both, you know, both, uh, you know, business owners, employees, digital, digital introverts, whoever need to be very much on the same page with regards to, um, their goals, their, you know, in terms of employees, personal goals, right. For, for their own career and how that would fit into the overall overarching goals of the business as well. You know, uh, in terms of how, uh, you know, the business itself wants to achieve certain, certain key milestones. Uh, and their growth, and then how, you know, for example, uh, a digital introvert would would fit into that piece of the puzzle. What is their role, and define it very clearly um, as well. You know, there are certain instances like uh, where people, especially people who are just starting out or or a very early career, where they just uh, end up at the bottom of the totem pole, and they get essentially assigned all the work that no one else wants to do. And I think that, you know, sometimes it, it it's really, um, it, it can feel very much like they're, they're, they're doing work for, <laughs> to, to just support everyone else. And it's not very much well defined, even though they may have a title and, and quote unquote, unofficial rules and responsibilities, if they see it in the job description, things like that. But oftentimes, you know, uh, the, the expectations and the reality of the job are much different. You know, it can be very, very true. Very, 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 very true. Um, well, Godwin, I, I appreciate your time. Is there anything that you would like to interject that perhaps I, I should have asked you that you would like to add? Um, for me, I think like we've really covered all the, the, the five main uh, points that we wanted to cover today, you know, e even if we didn't explicitly uh, mentioned them, right? Obviously, we covered um, digital technologies, and and you know we talked about culture and and those different um, different verticals, uh, the future of work, very much. So, uh, you know, mental health, a, you know, a bit in terms of how we can, you know, better ourselves, um, you know, uh, our own mindsets, and 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 to getting through this uh, pandemic and and looking to the future, and then also leadership on on how can business owners be very proactive in um, you know, be, be in not only being a pandemic proof business, uh, or a recession proof business, but also to, uh, be a place where digital introverts are free to be themselves, right. To be, um, you know, to encourage self-expression, to not, you know, force them to, 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 uh, go to meetings or social activities where they may not want to go to. Um, you know, have the flexibility to to work from home some days of the week, um, things like that. So I, I think we we did a, you know did do a, a fairly good job at, at covering all those aspects. Okay, good good to hear. Um, well, uh, how can people who want to learn more about digital introversion or your own particular uh, services reach out to you and get in touch? Sure. So uh, for myself, I am reachable at. I don't want I don't want to say all all social media accounts, but generally, uh, I have I have LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And you can find me at uh, Godwin H S Chan. Um, that that's my username at, at all these different platforms. Um, very much, very active on on all of them, especially LinkedIn. Uh, that's where I do the bulk of my just professional networking. Right, so you can find me there. Um, as mentioned in the beginning, I have a podcast. It's called Digital Introverts. Uh, you know, you can, I have, uh, Twitter and Instagram pages for those, um, it, username is D I G I I N T R O S H O W. Um, and then there you can find the link to, to listen to uh, a bunch of different podcast players of your choice. There's Apple, Spotify, Google, there, there's a whole bunch, right? Um, and other than that, um, yeah, that's, that's where you can find me. Okay. Well, thank you again for your time. 
And for those out there watching or listening, thank you for tuning in to an, another episode of Rebooting Business. I'm your host, David Summerfleck. I'm a digital marketing specialist at DMS.blue. And thanks again, everybody. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And if you're listening, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well, because every little bit helps. Okay, have a good day. And thank you, Godwin. Have a good day as well.